we have with us in this session two very brave human rights and democracy activists, one from Egypt and the other from Iran, and in the session that follows a young woman from Syria. All three have been imprisoned by their governments where they were tortured and suffered greatly for asking for rights that we in the West take for granted. Um, the first speaker, Michael Nabil, is a prominent young blogger and political activist who first began campaigning for a democratic Egypt in 2006. Michael played a leading role in the demonstrations just over one year ago that brought down President Mubarak. But he was quickly arrested within a month of Mubarak's fall when he demanded that other members of Egypt's ruling military cede power. Michael then spent most of the last year in prison, 302 days in all, 80 days of which he was on hunger strike and almost died. He spent many weeks in solitary confinement in a one meter by one meter cell. At other times, he was packed into a crowded cell with 50 common criminals. After a campaign, uh, led by his younger brother and other supporters in Cairo. He was released seven weeks ago on January 24th, and as he came out of prison, he waved a V for victory sign to waiting photographers. Michael has written blog posts in support of the rights of the individual in Egypt, in support of feminism, in support of those who want to, ca want to campaign for gay rights, and he has also said that Egypt could learn much from the democratic aspects of neighboring Israel. Michael. I felt guilt for not being beside my friends in Tahrir Square, but no guilt, I was in jail. Uh, seven weeks ago, I was in, in Torah prison in Cairo, and I, I wasn't allowed to use my mobile, not to use internet, not to communicate with my friends inside or outside Egypt, wasn't allowed to have uh, newspapers daily and, and had uh, great restrictions on receiving uh, letters or, or even uh, books. Uh, was, was in a complete isolation meant to silence me and use me as a threat and as example to terrorize other human rights activists. My name is Michael Nabil and uh, as uh, Tom said, I am I, uh, active 
uh, and writing since the beginning of 2006. I joined several uh, pro-democracy parties and political movements, uh, and writing continuously and heavily in, in my blog since the end of 2006. Uh, two years ago, I started uh, a campaign and a movement against compulsory military service. We named it No for Compulsory Military Service Movement. And it, it was the first anti-militarist and pacifist movement in Egypt. Uh, we are focusing in, in all the violations of the military institution. We are acting against wars. We are acting for peace. We are uh, confronting the military institutions with uh, their violations. And, and we are acting to end the compulsory military service in Egypt and to, to make Egypt recognize the right and conscientious objection. Uh, I myself, I declared that uh, I'm refusing my military service in the end of 2010. And, and uh, the military wanted me to, to serve as an officer for three years. And, and I said that this is going against my conscience. And, and, and I can't peer weapons, I can't carry weapons, and I can't kill anybody else. And I'm not supposed to hate someone or to, to kill someone because he is different in me and uh, with me in religions or in opinion or, 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 or any uh, or in race or any other cause. And, and I believe that, that international conflicts should be uh, solved by nonviolence and by negotiations, not by wars and blood. The military intelligence, uh, the military police arrested me after my declaration, and they gave me an exemption for military service, saying that I am insane. I am having a mental problem. Uh, two months later, uh, what was the surprise that uh, for the first time, thousands of, of Egyptians joined our demonstration against the torturing and the violations of police officers. For, for several years, we, meant to, uh, we managed to make several demonstrations against the uh, cruel uh, treatment of police officers, but, but uh, it was usually in, in small numbers. And, and for the surprise of, of, of every party at, at this time, and the 25th of January 2011, that thousands joined and, and uh, events passed, and we have on the 28th of January, the military on the streets. At that time, uh, the military propaganda was saying to everyone that the military is, is taking aside and he's not uh, supporting Mubarak and you won't shoot Egyptians. But, but in fact, they were doing the opposite. From, from the first moment of the military heading to streets, they were arresting activists, torturing them, uh, military trying them, and, and was speeding rumors and propaganda against the revolution, saying that what happens in Egypt is, is a, an external conspiracy and it meant to uh, destroy or, or uh, harm the country. At the time, majority of activists were uh, supporting the military and, and aiming to use the military uh, force to, to get rid of Mubarak, but, but I stand at the time saying we, 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 making, we are making a revolution for freedom and for democracy, not to get rid of a dictator and get another one. Uh, and I think uh, the, the military had had this revenge with me because uh, of my anti-militarist activism and peace activism before the revolution. And, and when in, in 4th February 2011, I was join, joining my friends in Tahrir Square and literally uh, wanted to prevent me from joining my friends. And, and uh, I insisted not to go back to my home. So they arrested me. And I spent a very painful night at the military intelligence where I was beaten and sexually harassed. And they released me the second day. And uh, I, I never gave up and get back to my activism. And after that, I wrote a, a small research. Uh, I named it the army and the people were never one hit. They, they were never one hand, even before Mubarak, we are living for six decades under a military rule, and, and we uh, 
we are not buying the, the military propaganda saying that the uh, army took the side of the revolution. It was published on, on the 7th of March, but actually the military was preparing its plan before writing this article because the military reached power on the 11th of February 2011, and two weeks after only, the head of military judiciary system uh, signed a paper allowing the military intelligence to make a case against me before even publishing this article. Uh, I was arrested on 28th of March by the military intelligence for my house, was moved to six places and, and suffered a lot. For, in the beginning, lots of people uh, in Egypt feared to, to, to support me because it, it was a very hard propaganda from the army against me questioning my loyalty to my country, my patriotism, and, and raising hatred and racism against me because of my religious beliefs and because of my opinions. And, and lots of other activists who defended me, they were attacked also by the military. In, in, in August, uh, I started a hunger strike against uh, my, my imprisonment, asking for my release. They, they accused me uh, of, of insulting the military. It is one of, of other uh, crimes in Egypt which are known as opinion crimes uh, because we have laws that restrict the freedom of expression and freedom of opinion in Egypt. Uh, after maybe a week, a Lebanese activist, his, no, his name is Noor Merad, he, 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 he felt sympathy for me and, and uh, feared of my life, and he committed suicide. Uh, he had his problem with the Lebanese military, but also he, he wanted by his death to send the world a message saying, uh, you are ignoring Michael Nabil, and Michael Nabil is dying in prison, and you are staying silent, you shouldn't stay silent. So maybe I, I'm, I'm here with you, and, and, and some people considering me a hero, but, but I think uh, uh, that, that heroes who, who were people who supported me and suffered for me and paid from, from their lives and from their safety and from their time and from, from uh, uh, their health and money to, to save me and to get me out and, and to let everybody know what really happens in Egypt and, and uh, what um, how the military in Egypt is trying to silence everyone who is criticizing it and everyone who are trying to let people inside Egypt and outside Egypt knows how it really goes in Egypt and how it affects the world. Because uh, uh, we are living in, in a small world. We are living in, in, in I, I don't live in, in borders and countries. What, what happens in Egypt affects Europe. What happens in, 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 in Asia affects Africa. Uh, we can't isolate countries from each other. And, and what's happening in, in, in Middle East can affect the whole world. Um, and and I, I'm grateful to, to all these organizations and individuals and activists who supported me and, and made, made a great pressure on the Egyptian military to free me. But uh, freeing me isn't, isn't the end of the trip because we are still under a military rule for six decades. Maybe my, our case in Egypt is different from, from China or Burma or, or Vietnam because uh, the Egyptian regime is, is considered as an aligned to, to the West and, and it's, it's have its weapons and its military aids from the West and, and uh, it, actually it, it spreads the anti-Western and anti-democratic and anti-peace propaganda in Egypt and, and use this propaganda as a way to threat and blackmail the free world to, to make sure that the international support for, for this dictatorship is remaining forever. Uh, last Sunday at the military court, there, were, um, there was an important case, which well, we were naming it the virginity test, because uh, last year on 9th of March, the military arrested uh, maybe 170 activists from Tahrir Square, 17 of them were females, and they made uh, compulsory or obligatory virginity tests for them. 
And Samira Ibrahim, one of the courageous activists, she made a case in front of the military court uh, accusing the uh, officer who made these tests. And uh, last Sunday, the military court announced him innocent. Until now, uh, we have over 100 uh, activists, according to uh, governmental statics, which I don't believe in so much. Uh, 100 activists killed during the last year. Uh, you have seen some of these scenes on the screen. Uh, and before Mubarak, there is nearly a thousand activists also killed. Until now, nobody was accused of killing these people, and, and nobody were uh, really tried. While uh, these killers are living free and walking free every day and, and uh, continuing their crimes, I am and my friends were prohibited from our freedom, were prohibited from our rights, and, and we have still some revolutionaries in, in prison still now, and, and even free ones who are, they are targeted uh, and kidnapped and, and beaten in the streets every, every couple of days. And, and uh, I'm, I'm sadly to say that lots of our activists left the country uh, asking for asylum in, in foreign countries, but uh, me and other friends are refusing to do so and, and uh, still committed to our cause to, to free our country and to liberate it from, from this dictatorship. Uh, I think I am, as, as the majority of us, are worried about uh, the future of, of my country and in, in, in it's related also to the future of Middle East. Uh, I'm, I'm not so much uh, considered about, about uh, uh, the cold democratic reform which is happening in Egypt because I don't believe Egypt has passed any election through the last months and I don't believe there will be any free election in the upcoming uh, months. The military is, is completely for Islamists and completely supporting them and completely pushing them to power with completely unfree and unjust election. Uh, and, and lots of, of major uh, civilian activists can't run even in the presidential election, like Ayman Noor, who is the former president uh, candidate, and, and he come, become the second in, in 2005 presidential candidate, and now he can't run in, in, in election for presidency, while, while uh, Islamic terrorists who were in, in prisons for decades for terrorism, they are free now, and their cases are dropped, and they are having all the aids and all the funds they need to reach power without being questioned for anything. So what we are having in Egypt is, is a military institution which uh, uh, mean to remain in power and violating the human rights of Egyptians every day and risking the peace in the Middle East and risking international peace for just remaining in power and using Islamists to threat the world and to make sure of continuity of uh, the Western support to this dictatorship. Uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm still optimistic because of what I see daily in the streets. I see, I see how, how revolutionaries develop their ideas, how they don't fall in, in the military propaganda and can uh, manage and know what is right and what's wrong. And, and I like how, how they uh, fight for their aims with moral and with uh, idealist uh, manner. Uh, every day, we, we gain more supporters. We, we can have marches and demonstrations with hundreds of thousands and maybe millions. Uh, every day, there are newcomers. Every day, uh, our, our ideas and our uh, minds are developing for, for the better, and which makes me too optimistic that, that in the end, we will win and there will be a, a democracy again in Egypt as we had before in, in the first part of the in the first half of the 20th century, before the, the coup of 1952. But, but I know that, that we have to pay more sacrifices, and I know that, that uh, even we lost, we lost lots of friends during the last months. We have to lose more. We are risking our safety, risking our life, risking our bodies uh, for, for our causes. But, but uh, speaking by myself and, and for others, we are owing to it. 
and, and uh, we are completing our mission to, to free our country from this dictatorship. Uh, and, and I think we, uh, we as a free world and a one world, we have to do two things. The first is to, to publicize all the violations which are happening in Egypt and in any other dictatorships because if, if the military arrested me to silence me, so we're we going to send them the message that we can't silence human rights voice. And, and if, if you arrest someone, we will continue to speak for him and, and with him and saying uh, what he was intended and we were supposed to say. We have to confront the, the, every dictatorship with their crimes and oppose them and, and make them stop these crimes against humanity and against, against human beings. Uh, the other thing which need, we need to, to do is not to compromise our ideals uh, we, we shouldn't be blackmailed by, by a dictatorship. We shouldn't let, let a, a dictatorship blackmail the free world, threatening them by democracy, saying that democracy can bring uh, Islamists or any other thing. We shouldn't question and we shouldn't compromise of, in human rights. We shouldn't compromise with our ideals, supporting our aims, believing, believing that, that no democratic country would choose war no democratic country uh, would choose to kill its free citizens for nothing or for just racism. We should know that, that any democratic country would, uh, would uh, seek development and seek uh, uh, progress, and there is no progress and there is no development in, in, in a country having war. That was my message to the world. Thanks for, for hearing me, and, and thanks for being with you today, which, which I missed for, for, for months. Thank you.